Start your engine. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. No after, after you. It's all about you, man. In 2005, I started riding BMWs, but the first two I had were a complete mechanical disaster until I tried an F650 GS Dakar, which had the reputation of being the best modern BMW out there due to its simplicity. With my F650 Dakar, which I named Agility due to its extraordinary turning circle, I rode to the Dolomite Mountains and the Grossglocken in Austria, and even off-road, it performed well due to its being light and slim, getting me through the tightest gaps. Unfortunately, my fears about BMW caught up with us and one breakdown led to another, destroying my confidence in the brand and nearly putting me off motorcycling altogether. I would see pictures of people riding their BMW to Africa and Asia and thought, nah, you airlifted that to the location or photoshopped it. But a good friend of mine, Tom Egger, had his BMW for 10 years and it never broke down once. Was I just unlucky? His BMW was behaving as well as my Japanese bikes, with the only real mishap being his BMW pannier catching fire after it got too close to the exhaust due to knocking a wall with it. We have come to the Fossway, which is an ancient Roman road near Bath in southern England and today consists of both tarmac road sections and sand and mud tracks with rivers flowing through it. He will share with us his experiences about reliability, performance, shortcomings and modifications he's done to his F650 Dakar. So here is his story. Probably like most of you guys out there, can't afford three bikes. This thing does everything pretty well. You know, um, I, I, I'm not saying it's a jack of all trade master, no, it, it gets by. Most of the time it'll do over 50 miles to the gallon, yeah. 55. But when I was on the continent, it was amazing. I had full, fully kitted out all the stuff on it, and there was one time it did like over 85 miles. And I was getting, I don't know whether it's the quality of the fuel or whatever, but I was getting such you know, amazing miles to the gallon. But maybe it's because I was using it more and, and the engine was running quite sweet, sort of thing, doing that sort of mileage every day. So, I mean, touring is fantastic. I've done four and a half thousand miles around Europe um, on one trip. And I, I've got the Vario panniers, um, and you really can fit a lot in them if they expand out. I never really expanded it right out, but I could fit a, a one-man, two-man tent in the bottom of it. Um, so I had a tent, I had sleeping bags in, and with all the, um, of course, the, the Varios, I got, I got all the in, inner bags and everything. These, these sort of things, which are, which are pretty handy if you're staying in. Um, uh, B and B's and everything, so you don't have to bring your hard luggage in. But the standard cans, <laughs> which are now missing, I, uh, I've got three different exhausts for this for this bike now, um, and it's almost like having three different bikes. You know, I've um, the, the, the standard cans are brilliant for touring. You know, they're they're probably the most economical. They're nice and quiet, and they they're a bit of excitement when you give it a bit more. The one I've got at the moment. Is a stay in tune that I bought second hand for about 60 quid off eBay, and it's a perfect compromise. I wouldn't overestimate the importance of, of changing your exhaust to, to get a different bike because it, it feels like you're, you're riding a different motorbike when you've got a different exhaust on the bike, and it, it's a damn sight cheaper than buying a new bike. <laughs> now, I've had an S650 Dakar, and I found that the engine was very smooth, almost too smooth, which sometimes made the ride almost a little bit boring. And uh, you know, I, I like to feel actually my motorcycle a little bit. You know, something that you know, just, there needs to be something going on there. I think one of the, the main selling points for me at the time was a lot of all, all of the, the, the thumpers back there were, were thumped. You know, they like, really vibrated. Whereas the, the BMW, the Rotax, you know, I think Rotax, the Rotax yeah. yeah, it is so smooth. You know? The only thing I would say on the motorway. Is the vibrations, and I don't know whether I can replace one of the, the weights on the end of the handlebars. It can be a bit vibrate, and you can see sometimes if I'm about to overtake on the motorway, it can be a bit blurry. I've literally got to pull the clutch in for a second, get a clear image, <laughs> so stop the vibrations, <laughs> and, then, and then go again. Uh. The uh, technique I learned from the nutcase from. Uh, Austria. <laughs> See how deep the water is. This is called the Alexis method of water depth testing. I think it's alright. 
It's also a good advert for seal skin socks. The seal skin socks are waterproof, windproof, breathable and keep your feet dry. Tom, that is not the Alexis method. <laughs> the Alexis method is like this. <laughs> You do the same thing walking. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> hey, you're cheating. I learned from my mistakes. Was it bad? No, it's alright. It's a bit tricky for traction. I think there's quite a bit of algae in there. Uh huh. But some, I think some idiot had been trampling around in there, so all I could say was <laughs> <laughs> Now some people criticize that the F650 Dakar doesn't have a rain fender at the front. Yeah, you'll see that you'll see the rain, you know, as you hit the puddle, it'll just divide and, and go to your left and your right. It never comes up. I've never experienced it coming up into my face unless you're green laning and you drive like an idiot through a, a deep puddle fast and then the water will just come up like a wave <laughs> over the top of you. Some people criticize that the F650 Dakar has a fuel light that tells you when the fuel is uh, going into reserve, but it doesn't actually have fuel levels on the dashboard. Yeah. My Vistrom has fuel levels, which yeah. give me like a bit of a warning. Do you think that's a downside on the F650 Dakar that um, it doesn't have a fuel gauge? To me, it's not an issue. I, I, I found at the time a lot of the, the, the 600, 650 thumpers just didn't have fuel gauges on. Um, and I know, I, I, I basically, every time I, I fill up, I just reset, reset there, and I know I've got, it, it normally comes on about 150, um, which is like, I think it's a 17 litre tank. Um, but the thing to remember with the Dakar is, I've never run this dry, um, and I've, I've done, I can easily do 50 miles on the, on the reserve, don't quote me on that if people riding the hard. <laughs> the one thing that really peeves me, that I think is absolutely essential, is the sensor. Yeah. I mean, just, just to, to oil your chain, it just makes it 10 I know, but I think in all fairness uh, for BMW, I can't believe I'm, I'm actually defending them now, but... Uh, you, 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 <laughs> ah, you, 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 this is my therapy, yeah? <laughs> slowly, slowly healing, yeah. yeah? I think in all fairness to BMW, most motorcycles don't come with a center stand, right. uh, because, because if they did put one on, there's very often the case that people don't like the center stand yeah. and they want to get a different one and then people are yeah. stuck with this one center stand that just yeah. ends up in the bin afterwards. But no? the standard GSs all come with a center stand, but the Dakars don't, probably because of that extra height. So, yeah, I think they're normally like 120 quid or something, which is, sounds a lot of money, but uh, definitely worth it. So where do you keep your tools? Is there yeah, somewhere a storage there's space? enough space under here for your weekly shop, actually. Really? Under here? How much do you shop one cereal bar? Oh my god, you can fit a whole load in there. Look at that. Who needs an estate car when you've got that? Mm. Another little extra I got was the, the Touratech handguards. I found that these didn't give a great deal of protection and the, and the Touratech sort of extra guard here just, just helps a little bit more when you're in freezing conditions. Now a lot of people see these TKC-80s, um, you know, semi nobbles um, as, as being a bit useless on, on the road, that, that isn't so. I've had, on one occasion, stupid occasion, I sort of went over round a bend and I, I ground the side of the peg um, on, on the tarmac. And, so th and that was with TKC 80s on, you know, and they, they still weren't giving up on me. I've had to replace the four seals probably four or five times in ten or so years I've had it because I think forks were slightly bent um, through the BMW off-road school and they became quite pitty and every time I replaced the seals they 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 tried to clean them up but they you know they, they said really you know, the chrome is was gone a little bit so I've had this on for like three months and hopefully uh, that'll stop. Well I think you're doing a little bit of extra protection here but my experience has been having both um, upside down and, and uh, regular fork regular forks is that if you have a if you have a leak on regular forks the stuff the oil doesn't come out straight away but if you have upside down ones yeah everything comes yeah. out in one go like on my ktm that i had yeah. and i had that problem like three times and then in the end 
I mean, I was new to motorcycling, then I didn't know about new frame four gators. Yeah. And then when I found that, it was like, yes, you know, I yeah. quickly asked my dealer when it broke the next time yeah. to fit those on. Yeah. And it protected, I never had that problem ever again. Oh, so I think right. with the regular, I think every new motorcycle that has up, upside down forks should come straight away with these kind of new frame yeah. four gators. So. It's a capable bike, you know, I think people underestimate it. So it's definitely a bike worth having. I think so. Well, I've had it for 10 years, so, and I, I had a Ducati 748 in that time, and I, I never used it. Well, I used it a few times a year, but it rained all the time. It was a, this is a bike that definitely has purpose as well. Oh, yeah. Because definitely. you can use it in all weathers, yeah, and you can even use it for going to work and stuff like that. Well, as that's well, it. It's, it's three bikes in one. Day, exactly. Right? You know, a good off road or a good yeah. touring bike. Yeah. Touch wood. I've, I've done nearly 28,000 miles on it. Never missed a beat. So, judging by your experiences, maybe the F650 Dakar is a very good motorcycle after all. Yeah, it's a very good motorcycle. No, oh. can we cut that, please? Cut, cut, cut. No chance, mate. That's on tape. Thank you. <laughs> no. no, no, no. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!